Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, a saboteur has just escaped from a locked compartment aboard the Terra 5. Now, with ray guns drawn, Buzz and Happy are searching the ship. He still must have that special spacesuit on, sir. At least it wasn't in the compartment. How did he get out? Smash the door. Uh, pick up customer. Uh, there he is. After him, Happy. Oh, where you are, I'll fire. He's heading for the weapons compartment. This will stop him. <laughs> Wow, that ray gun never even phased him. That suit, he's completely shielded. Come on, we'll have to tackle him. He's in the compartment with all the weapons. All right, Halcorn, come out of there. Come and get me. You'd better have something better than a ray gun, because I can drop you if you take another step. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, the test of the XK-3. <laughs> One bowl of rice checks. Here you are, Commander. Thank you. Me, I'll have wheat checks. Hi, Space Patrollers. This is Commander Corey. And Cadet Happy, having ourselves a top breakfast with our favorite cereals. Checks. Rice checks and wheat checks, Space Patrollers. Tops for taste. Terrific tasting out of the box or out of the bowl. Smoking rockets, they're delicious. Checks are tops for size. Size just right for easy eating. You know something, Space Patrollers? That neat bite size makes Chex taste even more delicious. Right, Hap. And gang, a good nourishing breakfast with Chex is tops for get up and go. Official Space Patrol get up and go, just like the commander has. So go get them, Space Patrollers. Chex, rice or wheat, in the red and white checkerboard packages. With a picture of me or the swell picture of Cadet Happy on the outside and the free Space Patrol trading card inside. Say, Commander, how about another bowl of checks? This time, I think I'll have rice checks. Make mine wheat checks. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, the test of the XK-3. Commander Corey faces the problem of capturing Valmer Castro, a criminal whose already clever mind has been transformed into a superintelligence by means of an ingenious brain sensitizer. But as far as the public is concerned, the escaped crime genius is of minor importance compared to a coming race from Pluto to Neptune to test a new space drive for interplanetary flight. Even in Space Patrol headquarters on the man-made planet Terra, the race seems to have taken priority over the search for Castro. In the central office, Buzz Corey focuses a pinpoint tracer beam on a gigantic space chart as Cadet Happy looks on. This will show you the relative positions of Pluto and Neptune, Happy. Yes, sir. They're in opposition to the sun. Right. They're as far apart from each other as they can ever get. Nearly 7 billion miles, or more than 250 million DU. Wow, that'll be some race. Mm -hmm. It's the longest straight line distance between any two relatively stable points in the solar system. Yes, sir. But if the distance is the object, why not race the two ships clear around the orbit of Pluto? Well, that may come later, Hap. But if the XK-3 performs the way we think it will, no further test or demonstration will be necessary. Well, then you think the XK-3 is sure to win? Well, it's too early to be certain about something as new and revolutionary as the new space drive, Happy. Well, from what I hear, nobody but a lot of old fogies think the Atlas stands a chance. Well, I wouldn't call a man an old fogey merely because he puts his faith in something that's been proved dependable. The Atlas has covered billions of DUs with the standard drive. I'd sure like to be aboard the XK-3, Commander. No one is going to be aboard either ship. Each will be robot controlled. Oh, to keep the human element out of the contest, huh? At the present stage, the XK-3 space drive isn't shielded against radiation. Oh? If the test is successful, shielding will be installed, but it'll be pretty expensive to shield a unit that probably will have to be pulled apart anyway for a checkup. All right, Happy, suppose we forget about the race and settle down to work. Huh? And that means Volmer Castro. Any leads on him yet, sir? Well, we're checking on his past associates. Yeah, but now that he's got his super brain, he'll probably get himself a new gang. Crook's more in keeping with his high IQ. That's undoubtedly what Castro wants to do, but it'll take time. Smart as he is, Castro can't go it alone. He's wanted by the space patrol. He'll need help. Obviously, no honest man will help him. So he'll have to contact some of his old gang. Right. The doctor's cerebroscope didn't put facts or knowledge in Castro's brain. It only made his brain more able to use the facts that are already there. Right now, he'll use that intelligence to gratify his old selfish motives and weaknesses. Well, uh, what are his weaknesses, sir, uh, outside of stealing? That's what we want to find out from his former associates. Let's contact Captain Damon and see if he's picked up any of Castro's old gang. 
Elsewhere, in a small community on the planet Mars, Balmer Castro seems entirely unconcerned by the fact that he is number one on the space patrol list of wanted criminals. His penetrating eyes never leave those of his visitor, a tall, burly spaceship technician named Grant Halcorn. You understand, Halcorn? You leave at once for the Pluto test base. Your traveling instructions are in this folder. Well, look, Mr. Castro, I don't know about getting inside the base. It's all been arranged. We'll have no trouble if you keep your mouth shut. Once you're aboard the XK-3, well, you know what to do. I suppose they make a check of the ship before blastoff. Of course they will. But they won't be looking for stowaways. Not in that gear compartment smack up against the space drive unit. Now, they'll be too interested in checking instruments and controls. I'm worried about that spacesuit, Mr. Castro. Doesn't seem like much protection. It's been thoroughly tested. You'll have done your work and be out of the ship before a harmful dose of radiation has a chance to penetrate. Yeah, if I can stand the exhilaration. That suit's awful bulky. Suppose I can't move to the escape hatch. The XK-3 won't be given high acceleration until the flight's well underway. By that time, well, you'll have made the necessary adjustments to the robot controls to prevent acceleration. Well, sure. And then I bail out as a ship crosses the Jupiter orbit. That's right. Your jetpack will be sufficient to give you a trajectory away from the XK-3's vector, and I'll pick you up. Okay, Mr. Castro. I got this, Halcorn. I've got a considerable sum of money on this race. The XK-3 is the heavy favorite. If the Atlas wins, I'll have ten million credits to set up my organization. Now, don't worry. The XK-3 won't stand a chance. Naturally. Two days later, in Space Patrol headquarters, Boz and Happy checked through data Space Patrol agents have supplied on Castro and former members of his gang. On the huge space chart, two small lights, one red, one green, move with agonizing slowness sunward from Pluto. Despite the temptation to watch the progress of the race, Happy diligently checks the reports. What a bum this guy Castro is, Commander. Even his pals can't trust him. Here are six guys who've told our agents that if they even saw Castro again, they'd bust him in the jaw. Yeah, they might have said that just for effect. Did any of them say why they were angry at him? Yes, sir. They're all sore about the same thing. Castro made bets with them and then welched when he lost. But he always collected when he won. Hmm. Very interesting, Happy. Very interesting. We've just learned something quite useful about Castro. We have? Yes. He's a gambler. Yeah, and very unsportsmanlike. I'll notify our undercover men to keep an eye on suspected big-time gamblers. They'll need cooperation from local authorities on that. Gambling is out of space patrol jurisdiction. Well, some guys will gamble on anything. I know a mechanic who's betting on the Atlas. Imagine a guy who's supposed to know something about spaceships, and he bets against the XK-3. Well, perhaps out of sense of loyalty, Happy. You know how fond you can get of a spaceship, whether you fly it or help repair it. Well, he's one of those old fogies who doesn't like anything new. <laughs> we must have a lot of old fogies in the universe, Happy. A lot of intelligent people think the Atlas will win. People must be crazy. The odds are 20 to 1. And look at the chart, sir. The Atlas blasted off ahead of the XK-3, and already the XK-3 is gaining. The race has just started. Neptune is still millions of DUs away. Uh, well, the only way the Atlas can win is for somebody to fire a space torpedo into the XK-3. Well, if you're worried about somebody blasting the XK-3, forget it. I've assigned patrol ships from every planet to guard the race vector. Oh, the lucky guy that drew the assignment for Terra. Uh, who got it, sir? Happy, uh... I've volunteered to patrol the Terra sector, and now if you'd like to go along... What are I? Smoking rockets? <laughs> I I mean, uh, well, yes, sir. Well, there's plenty of time. The lead ship isn't even to the Saturn orbit yet. Yeah, the Atlas is leading. Uh, but I bet the first ship we see is the XK-3. Here it comes, Commander, and right on vector. Yes, fairly close to schedule, too. Adjust a viewscope sensitivity control hat. Let's see which ship it is. Oh, it's the XK-3, of course. What else could... Hey. Commander, it's the Atlas. Why oh, shouldn't it be the Atlas? It blasted off first. It's the total elapsed time that determines the winner. Well, yes, sir, but the way the XK-3 was gaining at first... I'll check with Pluto. Commander Corey aboard Terra-5 calling Pluto Space Control, XK-3 robot testing section. Corey to XK-3 testing section. This is XK-3 testing section. Go ahead, Commander. The Atlas just passed Terra Patrol segment of the test vector, approximately on schedule. Yes, sir. We've been monitoring the Atlas control section. The Atlas was thrown off a vector by meteors outside the Saturn orbit. Velocity was reduced, and vector changed to avoid meteors. The Atlas is now back on plotted vector, but behind schedule. What about the XK-3? We are having trouble, sir. What kind of trouble? Well, Colonel Balcom thinks it's the space drive. Acceleration hasn't developed as it should. Could it be the robot controls? No, the colonel doesn't think so. 
the new space drive responded perfectly beyond the limit of previous tests. But now there seems to be a uh, dampening off, as the colonel expressed it. And you can't compensate by adjusting the robot controls? We'll try that, Commander. The trouble showed out near the Jupiter orbit. We are in complete control here on Pluto, except that the space drive seems to choke itself off. The colonel described it as a self-limiting function inherent in the drive force. Acceleration is becoming deceleration. But I would be glad to relay any suggestion to the colonel. Colonel Balcom is in complete charge of the XK-3. There are no suggestions. Corey, out. Of all the rotten luck... In his private cruiser, Valmer Castro carefully adjusts his spaceophone receiver to a prearranged frequency while holding a vector some distance from that of the test course. Hell, going to Castro. Hell, going to Castro. Castro here. Keep your transmitter power as it is. I can reach him. Right, if you got a fix on this ship, I'm going to bail out. I've stuck with this crate too long already. Now, there was a reason. The Atlas was delayed by meteors. I didn't want the XK-3 to gain an advantage because of that. She's choked down now, Chief. The more they try to accelerate her from blue to control, the more she'll slough off. Good. Bail out. I'll pick you up. Listen, I'm only a speck in space. The momentum of the ship will carry me forward. I can mentally compute your trajectory when you leave the ship. And don't worry. I may have to hold off until patrol ships are out of range. Scope, sir. The XK3. But it might as well be a century old tub the way it's blooping along. I can't understand it, Hap. There's nothing in the short test of the XK3 to suggest trouble like this with a new space drive. Somebody in Pluto robot control is goofing up. Oh, that's unlikely, Hap. Any defect in a robot control system would show up in the self analyzer, the self monitoring system. And you know as well as that. Hap, look at the viewscope screen, number three. Smoking rockets. What is it? A baby meteor? I don't think so. At any rate, it's receding from us. No meteor was ever that shape. Get a vector on it, Hap. Yes, sir. Hey, am I nuts? It looks like a man. A man in a space suit. You're right. Line him up in the vector computer, quickly. Well, what in the name of Jupiter's moons is he doing out there? Now, I've got it, sir. Unless he's changed course with a jetpack or something, this is the way it lines up. His vector would cross that of the XK-3. Yes, sir. But backtracking the XK-3 vector, the ship and the man were at the intersecting point at the same instant. Either they came mighty close to a collision, or... Or the man's trajectory began at the ship. In other words, he was aboard the XK-3. But that's impossible. Nobody could survive the radiation from the power unit. It's completely unshielded. I'm changing vector. We're going to overtake that man. Get into a spacesuit, half, and then into the airlock. Get ready to pull him aboard. In a few moments, the Terra-5 has adjusted its forward velocity to match that of the man in the spacesuit. In his own spacesuit, Cadet Happy waits in the airlock with the outer hatch open, ready to pull the man into the ship. Now the strange Voyager floats rigidly, like an inflated toy a few feet from the open hatch, as Happy directs Commander Corey by space I've got him, sir. I'm pulling him in. Uh, careful. Is he armed? No, sir. He's got a new type of spacesuit. Big metal. It, it looks like a... Uh-oh, my radiation indicator's clicking like mad. This guy's as radioactive as a ton of uranium. Get him after the decontamination compartment, quickly. Following Commander Corey's orders, Cadet Happy takes the unresisting captive to the decontamination compartment, thrusts him in, and turns on the radiation neutralizers. Half an hour later, at the commander's request, Happy goes back aft to investigate, then rushes to the control compartment. Commander, he's gone. He, he's got out of the compartment. What? It's empty, sir. He must be hiding further aft. I'll cut on to automatic control. All right, come on. Have your ray gun ready. Yes, sir. He must still have that special spacesuit on, sir. At least it wasn't in the compartment. How did he get out? He smashed the door. Uh, but the radiation must have been neutralized. The decontaminator was off automatically. Uh, there he is. After him, Hap. Hold where you are, or I'll fire. Commander, he's heading for the weapons compartment. This will stop him. Wow, the ray gun never even phased him. That suit is completely shielded. Come on, we'll have to tackle him. He's in the compartment with all those weapons. All right, come out of there. Come and get me. And you better have something better than a ray gun, because I can drop you if you take another step. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Dick Tufel with news from Edwards Air Force Base, Muroc, California. 
I've got an interesting story for you this morning about one of the most unusual-looking planes in the sky today, the XF-92A, designed by Convair Aircraft San Diego. Now, in just a second, I'm going to introduce you to the Air Force test pilot on that plane, Major Chuck Yeager, the first man to fly faster than the speed of sound. But first, I'd like to tell you a few things about the XF-92A. It looks exactly like a triangle. It's often called the flying triangle. Wings are swept back at a severe angle, 60 degrees. Top speed of this Air Force interceptor is about 700 miles per hour. Service ceiling is over 45,000 feet. And it takes some doing to test fly a ship like that. You need energy, plenty of it. And to face the risk involved, you need steady nerves. And now let's hear what a real test pilot has to say about it. Meet Chuck Yeager. Let me tell you what it takes to be a test pilot. To start with, I have to be in good condition. That means get plenty of rest, plenty of exercise, and good food at every meal. For breakfast, I like a cereal that really tastes good and has plenty of energy. Like rice checks and wheat checks, right, Chuck? Yes, checks are the cereals that are tops three ways. For taste, for size, for real get-up-and-go. So make sure you keep yourself ready for action, the way famous test pilots do. Pick your cereal for flavor and for energy. Today, get rice checks and wheat checks. And remember, they're tops with America's top pilots. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, the test of the XK-3. Buzz and Happy patrolling the Terra segment of a test race vector between Pluto and Neptune discover a man in a spacesuit hurtling through space on an angle from the course of the XK-3. Buzz suspects the man has been aboard the robot-controlled XK-3, but does not know that he is Grant Halcorn, hired by Valmer Castro to sabotage the experimental ship. When Halcorn escapes from the radiation decontamination compartment, Buzz and Happy fire their ray guns at him, but with no result. Alcorn reaches the weapons compartment of the Terra 5 and threatens to shoot the space patrolmen if they move. You might as well put up those ray guns. They won't penetrate this suit. If you come a step closer, I'll put you both to sleep. What'll we do, Commander? This ray gun will work on both of you, even through the cadet suit, and you know it. Well, what are you going to do? All right. Step out and let's talk it over. There's nothing to talk over. Just keep your distance, Commander. Just who are you, and what are you doing aboard the XK-3? Oh, you figured that out, huh? Well, I don't think there's any harm in telling you now. I'm Grant Halcorn. I was just making sure that the XK-3 wouldn't win the race against the Atlas. Who are you working for? What makes you think I'm working for anybody? Because really smart men don't run risks of radiation burns, even in shielded suits. The smart boys hire chumps like you to take all the chances. Uh, that's so. Now, who would want the new spaceship drive to fail? Someone interested in standard drive ships? Maybe. No, Halcorn. Anyone in the industry would realize that one failure wouldn't stop progress. The only one who would benefit would be a man who would bet heavily against the favorite. In other words, a professional gambler. A gambler who refuses to take chances. Someone like Valmer Castro. All right, Corey. I haven't got time to listen to you. Get moving, both of you. I hit it right, didn't I, Halcorn? I said shut up. Go on. Move forward. You too. You're so smart, Corey. Well, this time you're up against some real brains. Hold it. Well, it's in this compartment. Never mind, I'll look myself. Yeah. Empty. In you go, Commander. Go on! Yeah. That'll hold Corey. Now you, Cadet, you're coming up forward and show me how to work your space phone. I've got to contact a certain party. Stand right where you are. If you move, I'll put you out cold with a ray gun. Got it? Sure, sure, big shot. Alcorn to Castro. Alcorn calling Castro. Castro here. Go ahead. I'll make it short, Chief. Aboard Corey's flagship, the Terra 5, but don't worry, I'm in charge. You telling the truth? Sure. Commander's locked up in a compartment, and the cadet's here at the business end of a ray gun. Now, here's what I did. I'm I not thought... interested in details. We haven't much time. Head for Jupiter's fourth moon. You know the place I mean. Yeah, you bet. Land and come aboard. And we'll blast off for Venus and wait there until my men collect the bets. You'll collect, all right. The Atlas is sure to win. I know. Now change vector for Jupiter moon number four as quickly as you can. Castro out. All right, Chief. So the commander was right. You are working for Castro. Shut up and take those controls. 
Heather's ship to Jupiter number four. Now, don't try any cute antics. What's that? The meteor alarm? Yeah, I don't know. Smoke on rockets is the air system. There's a leak in the hull. Uh, where? Uh, check the indicator. There, see where that red light's flashing? Yeah, yeah I see. Well, where's the damage? In compartment three. We, we've got to get there quick. Let's take it easy. It's airtight, isn't it? You and I have got spacesuits, son. Yeah, but Commander Corey's in there. He hasn't got a spacesuit. That's his tough luck. Uh, look, Halcorn, if you bring the commander into Castro alive, uh, isn't that going to boost your stock? Yeah, that's right. Well, then hurry. If we act quickly, maybe we can save him. All right, get going. Uh, here's compartment three. Close your face piece. Okay. Gun, uh, uh, Drop it. Uh, I've got him, Happy. Raise his face piece. Yes, sir. And sit on him. He's hard to handle. All right, Halcorn. Just relax. Now take it easy, uh, Halcorn. There's no hole in the hull. Oh, that's a relief, sir. But what set off the alarm? The thermostat in the bulkhead. The thermostat? But it'll only sound an alarm if it registers excessive cold or heat. It was heat that did it. Have friction from rubbing my belt against it. Let's get Halcorn out of that spacesuit so it'll be easier to handle. And we'll get him up forward. And Halcorn, if you know what's good for you, you'll talk. That's the straight truth, Commander. Castro's waiting for me on Jupiter's fourth moon. First, I'd like to restore the XK-3's robot controls to normal. Uh, there's nothing you can do about that, Corey. The XK-3 must be virtually in free fall by now. If we take all the acceleration we can stand, we can overtake the XK-3 and correct those instruments. How can we locate the XK-3? Pluto Space Control is probably broadcasting periodic reports. Check that frequency. I'll get the Halcorn shielded suit and be ready to go aboard. By the time Buzz has donned the heavy, cumbersome spacesuit, Happy has obtained a fix on the XK-3. It is still hurtling on toward Neptune at a steady velocity, but of course losing ground to the still-accelerating Atlas. With Happy at the controls and Halcorn securely bound, the Terra-5 gains steadily on the XK-3. Then Commander Corey steps into the airlock, ready to transfer to the robot ship. With the space phone transmitter at low power, Happy contacts Buzz. We're alongside, Commander. Ready when you are, Hap. Apply magnetic holding field. Yes, sir. Airlock's joined, sir. Very good, Happy. I'm going aboard. Everything okay, sir? Yes, Hap. I'm at the robot instrument panel now. Can you fix it, sir? Yes, but I'd defy anybody to figure out what was wrong if they didn't know exactly what Halcorn did in here. He's made adjustments that gradually cancel out the control impulses from Pluto. I didn't think Halcorn was that bright. He just followed instructions. Castro is the genius. He's figured out the right combination to dampen the controls, something that wouldn't happen by accident once in a million times. Wow. I've about got it reset, Hap. It'll take several seconds to build up the balance, which is lucky. It'll give me time to get back to Terra 5 before the space drive takes hold. I'll be ready to cut loose, sir. Do it the second I give the word, Hap. There. That's the last setting. Stand by. Standing by, sir. I'm in the airlock, Hap. Disengage holding field. Okay, sir. Smoking rockets. The XK-3 really took off. Are you okay, Commander? Yes. I'll go back to the decontamination compartment and neutralize this radiation. You set a vector for Jupiter's fourth moon. Following the directions of Grant Halcorn, Cadet Happy skims low over the surface of Jupiter's moon number four. Suddenly, below them, in a crater, Buzz and Happy see a private space cruiser. A few moments later, inside the cruiser, Valmer Castro watches with grim satisfaction as a figure lumbers across the floor of the crater in a bulky spacesuit. Then, as he hears steps in the airlock, he draws a ray gun and holds it behind his back. Well, Halcorn, raise your face piece and get out of that suit. It must be very uncomfortable. Hello, Castro. Corey! Hold it. Don't move. Oh, come now, Castro. A man of your intelligence should know that a ray gun can't penetrate this shielded suit. It might work at close range. You better hold it, Corey. I warned you. 
Hand over the gun. All right, Casper. Get into a spacesuit. I'm taking you aboard Terra 5. And get this simple fact into that super brain of yours. One false move and I'll... Castro, get that suit off, and we'll put you back aft with your friend, Halcorn. Prepare to blast off, Happy. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, what's so funny, Castro? Well, just amused. You know, when I'm discharged from the center, I'll be free of what you call my criminal tendencies. But I'll still have my superior intellect. I hope so. And I'll have more than that. I'll be a very rich man, Corey. And what will you be doing? Still risking your neck while every crook in the solar system hopes you'll break it. Frankly, that's what I like. But what makes you think you'll be a rich man? From the money I've won on the race. I can still collect, you know. Happy, get the Neptune Space Control Channel, will you please? Yes, sir. Bulletin, NY-459. Repeating for all Space Patrol units. Neptune City Space Control. The robot cargo ship Atlas has just landed at the spaceport completing a non-stop flight from Pluto. See what I tell you, I won. The Atlas arrived just two hours and 15 minutes after the XK-3 broke all what? records. It's impossible. The XK-3 with its new space drive roared into victory despite a long delay that gave the Atlas a 10 million DU lead. Official figures of the XK-3's record run will be released at 0900 Universal Star Time. Neptune Space Control out. It, it can't be. I don't believe in gambling, Castro, but this is one bet you're going to pay in full. Ready for blast off, sir. Fire rockets. Fire rockets. Up, shipping away. In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure brought to you by Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk and those famous Nestle chocolate bars. Hey, gang, do you hear this at your house? Come and get it! Nestle's Quick! Yes, that's the Nestle's Quick call. Music to the ears of every Space Patroller. Quick makes the most delicious chocolate milk ever invented. It's rich, it's smooth, it's super chocolatey. Tastes just like those wonderful Nestle's chocolate bars. And say, you can make your own frosty glass of Nestle's Quick in no time flat, any time you want it. Because after you pour out your glass of milk, yes, I said after, then you just put in two spoonfuls of smooth chocolate quick powder and give it a little stir. And gang, that's all you have to do to make the chocolate milk that's real George. Mom will find Nestle's Quick in the big brown and yellow can, so ask her to get plenty because Quick is so full of vitamin D, it's better than good for you. Come and get it! Nestle's Quick! And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are testing a new spaceship out beyond the Saturn orbit. Suddenly, they find themselves on a collision course with another spaceship. That pilot must be crazy. He suddenly changed vector right toward us. He's not trying evasive action, so it's up to us. Fire starboard rockets. Commander, he's still coming at us. Half that ship is a robot-controlled guided missile. If we don't blow it up, it'll hit us. Stand by to fire space torpedoes. Standing by, sir. Fire one. Commander, the torpedo controls are jammed. We're going to crash! Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Image of Evil. <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameras, Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Deverick. <laughs> Other players were Bela Kovach, Norman Jolly, and Ken Mayer. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday for the new exciting Space Patrol! <laughs> Space Patrol was brought to you today by Rice Checks and Wheat Checks, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service.